Hello and welcome to Stay Paid, the sales and marketing podcast from Reminder Media. I'm Kevin McElvini, and I'm a content writer for Reminder Media. If you've been listening to Stay Paid for a while, you know that our hosts, Luke Akery and Josh Steich, pride themselves on having conversations with top producers from all industries. The goal is always to unearth what Luke calls golden nuggets. In other words, nuggets of wisdom and actionable advice that you can use to grow your business. We've been mining the Stay Paid archives, looking for the very best golden nuggets from over the past year. And this week, I'm going to share some of them with you. So grab a pen and paper and get ready to write down some amazing knowledge and strategies. First up, from episode 71, we have Dex Lipovich, a leading Manhattan real estate broker, better known as Dex and the City. In this golden nugget, Dex talks to Luke and Josh about how he used Instagram to build his hugely successful real estate brand. New agents are trying to build a brand for themselves. They're trying to figure out how they you know, are unique or different from all the other agents in their area. How did that process look for you? What made you find social media like you have? What did that look like? Well, I'll start off with the name Dex in the City. So the brand has always really been there. Um, it's just now been put, been injected with steroids and put out on social media, right? So my, my passion has always been sort of touring people around New York, whether it's tourists, my friends from out of town coming in, or let's say these international buyers and renters that I was dealing with, because a lot of these people came to New York just knowing that they wanted to invest in New York, but having no idea what neighborhood, right? Hmm. So I had to sort of be their like neighborhood guide. Not only to the, what apartment or what building, but like what neighborhood, right? What grocery stores are there? What subway lines are there? What attractions are there? Right. So I, when we would go on these tours, it wouldn't just be about like an apartment or a building that they were investing in. I had to literally take them around the entire neighborhood and right? around the entire city and sort of like give them a crash course on New York City. Um, and then one of my buddies called me Dex in the city and that's when the light bulb moment went off. I was like, wow, I need to just run with this. Um, so I locked down everything. Uh, domain name, getting the trademark done now, um, Instagram handle, Twitter handle, the whole nine yards. But I mean, Instagram, I've, be, I've recently become more omnipresent um, as per sort of the, the learnings that I had at the Disrupt Tour back in June. But Instagram was sort of always the bread and butter of like what I was going after, just because I feel like real estate in general is just such a picture and video oriented industry as well. And who doesn't like looking at like nice houses, of course. No, I agree. I, I actually do that. Sometimes yeah. I get on Zillow and without the price filter and just literally <laughs> let it go <laughs> without the price filter. <laughs> because it's in, it, it, one, it's entertaining to see kind of obviously the, these fancy houses and what they look like and everything like that. Yeah, but it's then the also, dream. It's the fantasy. Yeah, it's, it's picturing yourself there. Yeah. And if you, if you quickly, like if you just start glancing at my profile, which obviously you guys have, yep. like you could tell I'm absolutely obsessed with real estate and interior design. Right. Like there's no doubt about it. So has, has Instagram translated to leads for you? For sure. And I talked about this at Disrupt Tour. It's been the biggest driver of my business actually, not just before ads came out, like obviously that has been elevated since, but even before ads came out, like everybody knows what I do, my entire sphere of influence. And then from a personal networking standpoint, this is something I started back at the beginning of 2017. But rather than collecting people's business cards, I think that's sort of like a dying breed. Obviously, it's nice, whatever, if people yep. don't have social media. But rather than getting their business card or their phone number or their email, the one thing that I always go after is getting somebody's Instagram when I'm networking with them. And that's regardless if I met them for 30 seconds or if I had dinner with them. That, that's a that golden way they nugget. That is the golden nugget that is the transformative factor of my career so far over the last two years because they they fall into what I call my ecosystem. And as you know, since you've been following me for yep. almost a year now, you're going to see me every single day on the story touring a new property, right? And then from there, they it just automatically, they associate real estate with my name. Yep. So that's really where it came from. I don't necessarily want to say it's all like net new customers and people I've never met coming sure. in through Instagram, but a lot of times it's people that I met, let's say a year ago, two years ago, they added me and they're in that ecosystem. And then the leads kind of generate from there and referrals from there as well. This next golden nugget comes from episode 77 with Sean Carpenter. Sean has been named one of the most influential people in real estate by Inman. And as a coach, speaker, and practicing agent, he's got plenty of wisdom to share. 
So you have this tagline, build relationships, solve problems, and have fun. And I just want to kind of, you know, riff on this a little bit and understand really what you're getting at here and how it translates. We have a lot of real estate agents that listen to this podcast, different points in their career, new agents just coming on board in the industry, veteran agents, and then agents that are probably not living the life they want to live, and they feel like they're on this hamster wheel. Could you walk us through what this means, this tagline, and then how it applies to how an agent can really live an abundant life, how they can live a life where real estate is not running them, where they're actually running the real estate business? Yeah, thanks, Luke. I'd love to. I, You know, when you really break down what our business is about, and really any sales, because I think this translates to any sales business, whether it's marketing, sales, products, services, if you think about what we do every day, build relationships, solve problems, and have fun. Now, the have fun is optional, as you, as you know, but like, like you just said, it's a choice. And if and you have beer, can, I mean, it's, it's yeah, pretty it helps easy. Oh, Any, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. Anytime <laughs> you can have fun. But listen, um, build relationships. If every single day in sales you can be building a relationship, either a new relationship with someone that you've never met or deepen a relationship with someone that you've known for years, if you can help those people solve their problems, and whether they're real estate related problems or not, if someone is good at solving problems, when they have a real estate problem, they're probably going to call that person who's good at solving problems and also is in real estate. And if you can have fun doing it, I just think that that becomes worth talking about. And, and, and that's a big pitch I'm on right now is, is if I can get other people to tell my story for me, then I don't have to spend my time, effort, and money telling my story. Mm, yep. Right? Seth Godin, the great Seth Godin said that our job is to turn strangers into friends turn friends into customers, and then the most important thing to do is turn those customers into salespeople. Get those customers to tell others about us, mm. right? To, to be no like, and trust, but then get them to try you. When mm -hmm. they try you, they buy from you, and if they're willing to buy from you, they'll hopefully be willing to repeat business. And if they're willing to repeat business, they're willing to refer business. Oh, so, so if good. every day, <laughs> if every day I can get people to, to build a relationship with, to solve problems with, and, and look, that can be in person, or as we might talk about later, it can be through social media. It can be through digital because I can. No one can 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 say that Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube allows me to build relationships further and faster and freer than I ever could one on one in person. So it starts by building relationships, solving problems, and having fun. If you do those three things every day. The houses, the listings, the sales, the products, the services will take care of themselves. So what does that translate to? So if I'm an agent listening to this, or really any business, like, but let's look at it from the real estate perspective because that's the industry you're in. Or, you know, what does that translate to in actions? And then, like, I call it operational leverage. We talk about it a lot on this podcast. It's like you implement tools in your business. You, you implement processes that you do on a daily or, like, things that you can implement to give yourself a leverage. So you can do, obviously, the things you're better at. But what does that look like? What are some of the operational things they need to implement? How, the, how do they need to attack their business from a process standpoint? Could you give us so some insight look, there? Yeah, let's talk tactics. And, and, you know, there's really two things an agent does with his or her day. They either do business development activities or they do business support activities. Mm. Business development or business support. I can take anyone's to-do list from the day or I can look at, I can follow you around for a week and just, I'm, I'm just going to draw a line down a sheet of paper and say, is it a business development activity or is it a business support activity? Now, Josh, what do you think most agents spend most of their time doing? Business development or business support? Support. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, you're right. D business support. And, and, you know, I ask people why and they say, well, it's easier yep. and it has to get done. Keeps you busy. And I agree with that. Yep. But let me tell you, let me tell you why most people spend most of their time on business support. Because there's no rejection involved in business. Oh, Amen. That's there a golden go. nugget, people. Listen but to that. But there is yep, no risk. in business development. But yeah, here's what I know. If you spend all your time doing business support and not business development, there soon will be no business to, to support. support. <laughs> so if every day we have to treat our, our, our career, our, our opportunities like a, like a farmer every day in a field, right? Yes. We have to work the land. We have to put seeds in the ground. We have to fertilize and water and, and work the land and wait for the seeds to pop through and become a you know, a plant. And we still don't have a harvest yet, do we? We still have to work the field yep. and, and, and prune and, and fertilize and water, and we have to wait and be patient. So when I jump back into sales, Luke, I kind of teased earlier, I had to do what I was teaching agents for 13 years to do. I had to, in order to grow my business from a real estate business and a speaking business, is I had to build relationships, solve problems, and have fun every day. So I created what I call my 4-H club. And, and what that means is every day when I get in the office, 
And I'm usually the first one in the office. I'm usually there before 8 o'clock. The first thing I do is I do the 4-H club. The first H is I do five handwritten notes. All right? Mm. Five handwritten notes. I and, and I start with thank you notes. Is there anyone I can thank from yesterday? Because as you know, thank you notes are the easiest notes to write. They almost write themselves. But if I don't have anyone to thank, I just write to the next person on my CRM a handwritten note. The second H is I run a hot sheet. Now, this is real estate specific, but a hot sheet is in the MLS where it shows you yep. the newest listings, the price changes, the, the in contracts, and the sales. And as I run through that, two reasons I do that, Luke. I was retraining myself on the local market, so I'd remember the street names and price points and things like that. But as I go through that list each morning, and it could be 10 houses, it could be four, however many is in my local market, I say to myself, do I know anyone that lives within a two-block radius of that house? And if I do, I text them, I call them, or I email them that listing. And I just say, hey, just want to let you know that the house down the street had a price change. Or, hey, that's, that's just want to know the house in the next neighborhood uh, listed yesterday. So that that's just a little touch. The third H I do is happy birthdays. That's the first time I, I jump onto Facebook while I'm in the office, and I see which, which of my friends have birthdays that day. Now, let me, let me spend some time on this one because this is a gold one. A nugget, as you say. What do most of your friends do, Josh, on, on your birthday? What do most of your friends do? Most of my friends? You mean like on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, right. happy birthday, happy birthday wall, right? message on the wall. Yeah, 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 see, that's actually not what most of your friends do. Most of your friends don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, if, you if have you, no friends. No. <laughs> if you think about it, if you have about 2,000 friends, on your last birthday, you probably got 200 people yeah. that mm. wish you happy birthday. Yep. So the fact is, most of your friends do nothing. So what I do is I don't just, just try and write happy birthday on your wall. I write a little bit more than happy birthday. So here's what happens. By about 2 o'clock in the afternoon... Josh or Luke jumps on in their Facebook. It says, you know, uh, you have 84 notifications or 35 notifications. You're like, oh, my God, 35 more. And you scroll through your phone. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that that Sean wrote? And, and mine says something like, um, today's your birthday. Forget about the past. You can't change it. Forget about the future. It's not here yet. Forget about the present. I didn't get you one. <laughs> I hope you have a good year. Right? Something funny. But here's what happens. And memorable. You're scrolling through. Happy. Yes. It's, and then they people go, like, thanks, Carp. Funniest post of the day or which means for that split second i was in the top of my orange. Sure. Yep. yes and if it's someone that's a close friend of mine i will send them a video text message i will open up my phone i will dial their text number and i will hit record and i will just simply say something like hey luke it's sean carpenter from columbus hey just want to wish you a happy birthday today man hope you have a great day a good year ahead and may you have lots of opportunities to build relationships solve problems and have fun send Dude, you're how beast. simple is that? But how many video <laughs> messages do you get on your birthday? Probably not a lot. That is and then awesome. the last H, the last H is what I call my high fives. Now I'm already on Facebook, so I do five likes on someone's, you know, five likes on my feed. I do five comments on my feed. I jump over to Twitter and I do five retweets or comments on people's tweets. I then jump over to Instagram, and I don't just do five likes. I do five comments. All right. And that's critical because think about this guys with Instagram, it's become so easy just to scroll through and go like, 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 yep. like the end of a, at, when you, at the end of the day, when you look at your post, you're like, Oh my God, 85 likes or 115 likes, but three comments. What do you pay attention to? Comments. The comments. And you think of those people and you like their comments and you usually respond back yep. to their comment. So do five comments. And the last, it, the last part of my high fives, is I do five random texts. So I just roll through my phone and I send five random texts and it could be as easy as, hey, Josh, hope you have an awesome day. Or, hey, Luke, did you see the, the extra innings home run by Bryce Harper in the game last night? And I might send the link off YouTube or something like that. Just a, just a random little touch. Yeah. When I've done my, high, my 4-H club, I then go across the parking lot to our Starbucks and get my coffee as my reward for putting seeds <laughs> in the ground. Yeah, man. Now think about this. He's conditioning about this himself. By nine, yeah, by nine o'clock... By nine o'clock in the morning, I've touched in some cases forty-five people. Yeah, five handwritten notes. Let's say three uh, hot sheet touches, twelve birthdays, and twenty-five touches. That's forty-five touches. And how many of them were about real estate? Only three. Mm. Only the three from the hot sheet. I was just trying to get Sean Carpenter's name in front of somebody with a nice t touch, so that maybe they think about real estate, they think of me, or when they think of me, they think of real estate. That's that's all I'm trying to do. Four H Club guys. It's it's almost too simple, isn't it? That is unreal. I mean. Good gosh. Yeah. Like we could, I don't want to end the podcast now, but we could literally end the well, podcast. The, the power I mean, that of that, was amazing. The man. power of that is you're actually psychologically, mm -hmm. I think you're leveraging what we said, like 
most of our time goes into business support, which are the tasks that are repeatable and systematized. Mm. You're taking business development, turning it into a system where, not that you don't have to think about it because you still have to be creative maybe on some of those video text messages, but it's repeatable, it fits within a scheduled amount of time, and it's building your business at the same time. Willie Mandrell is the founder of The Mandrell Company, a brokerage focused on multifamily real estate investment, as well as Boston Wealth Builders, a group of professionals interested in creating long-term wealth through real estate investment. In this golden nugget from episode 66, Willie talks about the importance of networking. As you look back over your year and maybe last couple of years, what's the number one place deals are coming from? Like, what's your best lead generator? Because we get that question all the time, you know, from our audiences. Hey, where are, you know, obviously they have their goal. They want to do 100 transactions. Next step is where are those 100 transactions going to come from? What's your number one lead generator for you? Is it the phones? Is it content marketing? Is it networking? What's your number one lead generator? Um, I know a lot of agents probably don't want to hear this, but it's it's networking. It's just getting yep. out and meeting people. I, I think, you know, you know, we just talked about it, you know, the world becoming a little bit more social, but the idea that you can just sit back and post things on Instagram and build a massive business, I think is flawed. And that's just me. There might be, you know, some, some people out there that are absolutely killing on Instagram, and I don't want to knock that as a strategy. But in my opinion, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube's are supplements. Um, there's supplements, there are things that you do into it in addition to, but I don't think that there are too many things that you can um, do that are going to um, overtake the face-to-face -face conversation that you have. Just sharing a beer with somebody, getting in there and telling them you know, what you do. Um, they're able to see your passion, understand, um, you know, when you can see someone's face, you can hear it in their voice, you can understand what they're trying to do. I think it's a lot more powerful than uh, any image that you can put or any quote or any inspirational quote that you can put on Facebook. Um, so getting out there and just meeting as many people as you can, I mean, you never know where leads are going to come from. And when I, when I say networking, if I can just clarify, I don't, I don't necessarily, and we talk to our agents about this as well, that doesn't necessarily, real estate agents think that they need to go to business networking events or real estate networking events where there's a whole bunch of other real estate agents in the room. That's not what I mean. I mean, find something that you enjoy doing. It's swimming, it's tennis, it's golf, um, and go out there and join a meetup or an event that, right, yep. or and just go out there and meet people who are not necessarily in your line of work. They're doctors, they're lawyers, they're, they're nurses, they're, they're, they're caretakers, and they enjoy, you have a, a commonality now, right? You're, you're biking and you just enjoy the, you know, a 10 mile bike ride or whatever. I don't really bike, so I don't really know if that's a good distance <laughs> or not. <laughs> but you're, you're sweating and, you're, and, you, and then the conversation of what you do for work always comes up. It says, you, you know, well, you're a doctor. Well, I'm a real estate agent. If you ever need anything, you know, and then you don't have to have that awkward conversation of here's my business card and sticking it down their throat. Um, that conversation comes naturally. You have something to talk about now outside of what you do. Um, and they're more likely to enjoy that you enjoy tennis. They enjoy tennis. They're more likely to do business with you on the opposite side. So that's what I say. I mean, when I say networking is getting out there, whether it be a cooking class or you know, uh, or snowmobiling or whatever it is you love to do, go out there and just meet as many people as you can, dump them back into your CRM, and I can almost promise you that your business will uh, explode. Dude, that's so gold. Up next from episode 81, we have Kim Angeli, a veteran of the insurance industry and the founder and president of Grateful Box. In this clip, Kim explains how building relationships with clients is a long-term effort with exponential results. So you're planting corn, right? We're planting corn every day. We're planting the seeds every day of connections and building relationships. But we can't plant corn today and eat corn tomorrow. And what happens in salespeople and business owners, and I see it every day, we'll do a relationship marketing campaign. We'll send out birthday cards or thank you notes to the top clients. Or let's say they send your magazine out and they don't get $500,000 worth of sales the next week. Yep. Right? They, they're like, oh my gosh, we didn't. It's We're planting corn. And so... Some of the corn will grow and we'll eat it. Some mm -hmm. of the corn will not grow. Some of the corn will die. But if we don't plant corn every day, we're not going to eat corn. Mm. And what happens is just like my carpet cleaner, I know for a fact, I love him, is once he did all those gratitude calls and got all that revenue, he didn't do any more. Mm. But see, you have to do about five things a day to move your business forward. So we're planting corn every day because the farmer doesn't go out and say, well, let's just throw some corn out there and hope tomorrow we come out here and we have stalks of corn. It doesn't happen. Yep. And so what happens with the salesperson is we get very frustrated. I've been there. I'm not that way now because I've unlearned those bad habits is I plant the corn. I water the corn. I nurture the corn. 
And some of the corn is big, they're my raving fans. Some of the corn is little, they might be my C clients. And then some of the corn I can put miracle Grow and make them into raving fans. And then some of the corn so I don't awesome. eat at all and I just move on. And so that's the difference is we become impatient with the process. That's so awesome. But if awesome. you don't consistently, what you work on 90 days from now shows up 90, today shows up 90 days from now. And they don't want to hear that. Right. They want to hear they do a Facebook campaign or a mailer and they're going to eat corn next week. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can't even really say, I mean, that's such a golden nugget. Rewind that. Here's what I'll say to everybody. Listen to this. Rewind that. Listen to that again. Listen to the last two minutes again. That is the key. I cannot tell you how many people we've had on that. It, it, the, it might be like you think of Sean. I think of Sean Carpenter that said the four H's. Yeah. The four things he does every day. You're saying five things. But the point being is it's in the consistency of doing it every single day. And doing it in a way that gives value, gives back to people you're reaching out to, because th business is a long-term game. It's a farming game. I think that's an incredible analogy. You make me want some corn right now, some sweet corn, because it's a great analogy of where people fall down in business. And the reason why they fall down is because some of you are in this boat right now listening to this. You have no money. Let's be honest. You're living on your credit card. You started your real estate business. You started your insurance business. So you have no money. And we heard this, I think, from Matt Holder on this podcast. You get commission breath. And everything becomes about, I got to get a check because if I don't get a check, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. And it takes a ton of discipline, a ton of discipline to not give in to that and to be consistent day in and day out. And if you do that, it's like you said, if you play a 90 day cycle, that next 90 days will be amazing. So you're in quarter two. We just started quarter two not too long ago. If you play quarter two out, your quarter three will be amazing. If you're having a crappy quarter two, it's probably because if you look at what you did in quarter one, you slacked off. So I think that's incredible, incredible, incredible advice. Bubba Mills is the founder and CEO of Corcoran Consulting and Coaching. He's helped businesses of all sizes and industries become more efficient and more profitable. In this next clip from episode 84, Bubba talks about the power of reciprocity in your community. So when you look at like a small business owner, you look at their P&L, right? So you're looking at that monthly, you know, obviously you need to focus on income generating activities. You know, it's right. not about necessarily cutting expenses. It's about being wise, right? You want to be wise in how you're spending your money, but you don't want to pinch pennies because you're going to lose dollars that way. And so what, how do you walk people through the process of building their business sustainably from income generating activities, meaning so often it's like we try one thing, then we fail. Like what, what are some of the sustainable things that you see that have lasted in, in the test of time, I guess, for lack of a better way yeah. to say it? Every company, no matter if it's an insurance company, a title company, mortgage, whatever, I don't care what I'm coaching. You even have three minimum of three types of, of business, right? There's free, right? That's referrals, past clients, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And you have leads that you rent. So leads that you rent is when you go to like a Sierra Interactive, a Y Lopo, Commissions Inc., Boomtown, you're renting the platform, you quit paying for it, it's gone, right? Mm. And then you have to have lead sources that you own. Mm. So when you own lead sources, that's when you're doing your own marketing on Facebook and doing a $2 a day ad spend or we're, you know, working with other small businesses. The number one way to generate business in your community is to be able to promote another small business in your area. That's called a nugget right there. Mark that down, so, people. I do this entire session called the Art of Reciprocity, and it's got over five ways of getting free business. It's just as easy as this, right? If if you guys take this video, right, and you say, you promote me on it. Hey, you know what? We did this video with Bobby. You got to watch this thing. I'm going to be like, oh, crap. They did a video on me. What am I now need to do? Yeah. I need to put it on my stuff, right? Amen, right. you do, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the memo. I didn't get the check, but I got the memo. <laughs> so, so now, right, I put it on mine. I put it on mine. Now my wife goes, hey, you know what? My husband just got this thing. Let me, she's going to put it on hers. You know, Maybe my kids are going to do it. I'm going to have my team members so put it good. on theirs. So I'm going to get a blast. That's why I get the most marketing. You guys just got 10 acts on your on your database by doing one thing. And yep. how much did this cost you guys? Zero. Mm -hmm. 
Now, these realtors need to go to their local small businesses, right? I don't care if it's a quilting company. I don't care if it's a, if it's a grooming place. I don't care if they're solopreneurs or entrepreneurs, right? Stay away from the franchises. Let's do business with local companies. And go on an interview one a week. Do a Facebook Live or yep. record it. Edit it later. Put it on there. They'll put it on them. Boom. I just doubled my database like that. And it cost me nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's not hard, guys. That's it's not. so good. And I would make the point also to people like this idea of reciprocity is everything. It, it, like we're learning so much and cr- trying to grow our social media right now. And I'm sure some of you out there are trying to grow yours. Like the main place we're seeing success is when we treat social media. I, I almost enter it now like this is what does Luke want? Oh, I want people to comment on my post. Oh, I want people to like my post. I want people to save it, all that good stuff. I want people to tell me how much they like it. So then that's what I want. So then I go do that to other people. Like I literally am now in the mindset of like, okay, I'm going to enter this social media world. Not It's not about my posting. So much of it, I like go into social media and I'm like, okay, what am I going to post today? How is this going to look good? Instead of going, wait a second. I'm going to enter this realm of social media and I have all these friends that I'm connected to. And then I have the ability to go search and find people locally. I'm going to go give to them what I would want, which is comments and engagement. And like, and so this idea of reciprocity is so powerful and, and really transcends. I mean, you could do it with your local community and partner in local businesses. You do it on social media. Think about it when it comes to your door knocking. Think about it when it comes to your phone calls. I love reciprocity is really everything because it really is about a relationship. You're giving value to people. You're building a relationship. This last clip comes from episode 76 of Stay Paid with Sean Everett a Las Vegas-based agent and the founder of Everett Academy, an interactive training system for real estate agents. In this clip, Sean talks about the importance of staying connected with your past clients. So tell me, yep. has it, it's been systems. Can you give us a little bit more detail on, you You know, you build your database. I love that. I think that's a golden nugget for people that are listening that are brand new to real estate. The first step you have to do is build your database. And that starts with your friends, your family, your sphere of influence, and picking up the phone, calling them, letting them know what you're doing. Could you give us a little bit more detail on what type of calls are you making to your database? Like, how are you... So yeah, I know I need to build a database, but how did you guys go about making those calls? Like, do, like what were you talking about? What were some of the ideas you came up with to keep in touch with people? So first and foremost, if you're you're hitting anybody up and you don't talk to them on a on a daily basis or a consistent basis, and you go straight into the cell, you you just shot yourself in the foot right there. I mean, that's the mm. first thing you don't do. So we hit up everybody in our database. Hey, what's going on? How's life? You know, hey, we just got back from brain surgery. Tell them about that a little bit. <laughs> that's that's, you know, a, that's a great way to call. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, man, it was it was some of the calls were hilarious because I got some really good clients that are really, really good friends of mine. And, and man, they just hammer me into dust half the time. But, um, you know, one of the one of the biggest things that we did that, that we still do today and we do on a completely different scale is, hey, What's your birthdays? What's the family's birthdays? What's the, what's one. your anniversaries? Yeah. Like when they bought the house, right? Yep. That's their home anniversary. And then birthdays for them and all their kids. So yeah, that's such a soft a, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff is, is huge. So we actually use a, a system called Send Out Cards. And what that does is it allows you to use your handwriting. Um, you, you have it automated. So you can put in everybody's birthdays, everybody's anniversaries, whatever. It sends them out a card, sends them out some brownies, some cookies, whatever you want to send them. And oh man, it's such a nice presentation and everybody loves that. So basically our first, our year back from, from surgery was gathering data. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were doing that hardcore with everybody. So we basically would hit them up. Hey, what's going on? What's happening? You know, and then we'd call them back a couple of days later. Hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know, there's a couple of things going on in the market right now. I know we spoke a few days ago. You said you're wondering what's up with your house. Here's a market analysis. Here's a CMA, anything like that, that you can give value because everybody knows you're a realtor. Everybody knows that's what you do and you sell things. You know, they could care less, honestly, what uh, <laughs> what's going on in your life as a realtor unless they're good friends, you know. So if you just go straight into the sell, completely wrong. you got to give value. Um, and, and, I'll, and a little bit later, I'll kind of hit on what we're doing now for that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And it's just uh, it's changing everything to a whole new level streamlining the business and basically allowing me to spend more time with my family and help coach the agents on my team. And that does it for this week's edition of Stay Paid. 
We've had a great time digging through the past 12 months of episodes to unearth these golden nuggets, and we certainly hope you've learned something new that you can use to grow your business. For the full interviews from this episode, check out the links in the show notes. And for more golden nuggets every single week, be sure to subscribe to stay paid.